on this week's show, the Georgia Southern baseball team continues to struggle at home. We'll have highlights of their three-game series at home against Lafayette. And we'll also check in on the Eagle football spring practice as they prepare for Saturday's blue-white game. All that and more as we welcome you inside the Eagles. Blue, blue, white. Eagles can't fight if they're blue, blue, white. Eagles can't fight if they're blue. And welcome inside the Eagles Nest. I'm your host, Josh Aubrey, being joined by Mike Anthony, sports editor and Georgia Southern beat writer for the Statesboro Herald. And Mike, for the Georgia Southern baseball team, it's been far from home sweet home. They got swept last week, uh, two weeks ago. This past week, lost two of three with Lafayette. And again, a game they could have had, you know, the first game, they were really in it. And actually, even in the third game, they had a lead in that game. So there's been some promising moments but they haven't been able to hold on to them and instead they lose two out of three your thoughts on where the baseball team is well the baseball team really needs to start getting things turned things turned around right now third consecutive conference series at home that they haven't been able to pull out a, a series win uh, you mentioned getting swept by texas state dropping two out of three to troy now two out of three to louisiana lafayette which isn't the worst crime in the world lafayette was in the rankings earlier this season they bounced around throughout the season, a very good team. But the sad part is that all these games that they're losing, they're right there. It's a one-run game, a two-run game, or a game where they had the lead. Going to extra innings uh, after getting a guy thrown out at the plate on Friday night, they aren't able to hold on in extra innings. A, a squeeze attempt by Lafayette gets a job done there and leads to four runs in the 10th. The good news is the next day they bounce back, they correct some of those mistakes, defend a squeeze, throw a guy out at the plate, but then with a chance to take the series on Sunday, the bats finally woke up, a great sign for the Eagles, but the pitching there at the end, the bullpen couldn't quite hold on. Yeah, grand slam to end that game was a, was a tough heartbreaker there. For the Georgia Southern Eagles, let's get out and see some highlights from that three game series at home this past weekend with Lafayette. Georgia Southern in the first of three with Lafayette. We pick up things in game one, runner on first, Brad Anchek sends one to left, the double going to plate the first run of the game, and it's one nothing Raging Cajuns. Georgia Southern pitcher Evan Challenger would settle down, picking up the strikeout later in the frame. The Eagle Bats being kept quiet thanks to Lafayette pitcher Gunnar Legger. He gets the inning-ending strikeout here in the third. The Cajuns are adding to their lead, going up 2-0 in the fifth. Ishmael Edwards with the single, Nick Thurman scores, but in the bottom half of the inning, the Eagles will get on the board, a couple on, Will Hudgens lines it up the middle, the pitcher gets a glove on it, Hudgens thrown out, but the fielder's choice plates a run, 2-1, to one. Georgia Southern ties things up moments later, on the wild pitch, Kent Rollins comes home and it's 2-2, two to two. this one would end up going to extra innings. And unfortunately, the Raging Cajuns would score four in the 10th to take this one by a final count of six to two. So to Saturday we go, Lafayette up one nothing, but the Eagles tie it up in the bottom of the first. Ryan Cleveland, the RBI single to center. Logan Baldwin scores and it's one all. To the fifth we go, trailing two to one, two on for Cal Baker, who singles into left. Jordan Wren and CJ Brazel both score. The Eagles take a three to two lead. In the sixth, the runner on third, the Cajuns try to squeeze, but check out the play by Chase Cohen on the mound to get the runner at home. Nice tag. Connor Simmons in in relief, and he'd go a strong three innings, striking out four in the process. We move to the top of the ninth. Runner on third, infield in, and the grounder to second. Cal Baker comes up firing. C.J. Brazel applies the tag, and the Eagles win a wild one, three to two. Move to the rubber match on Sunday. The Eagles in an early hole, trailing 2-1. Brian Mills takes this one up, up and away. The two-run shot would help them out to a 6-1 lead, but this one far from over. In the fourth with the score 6-3, C.J. Brazel, the RBI single to left. Hunter Thomas scores and it's 6-4. Next, it's Jordan Wren. He drives this pitch to the wall. Brazel will come in to score 
and it's a one-run game at 6-5 to five, Lafayette. To the six we go, bases loaded down 7-5, and Ryan Cleveland singles to left. Jordan Wren scores. Cal Baker will slide home. Head first, safe as well, and we're tied at 7-all. Still in the sixth, and Hunter Thomas, the batter, he singles to right center. Logan Baldwin home. Cleveland comes in as well, and it's 9-7 Georgia Southern. But the big blow coming in the eighth, Brian Mills again. And with the bases loaded, he pokes this one over the fence and left. The grand slam, and Lafayette. Wins another wild one, this one by a final of 13 to 9. Well, next up, maybe their success on the road will continue. They go on the road to Arlington, and hopefully they can pick up a couple wins there and win a series there because it's pretty important at this stage in the season. And, and UT Arlington, not a breather, not a, uh, an easy team to beat by any means, especially on your longest road trip of the season. But after the last two weekends, Texas State, UL Lafayette, Definitely maybe a half step down in the level of competition, but the Eagles are just going to have to be more consistent. They've gotten great starting pitching throughout the year. The hitting's been off and on, and uh, the, the tricky part last week was that when the hitting showed up, the bullpen, which has been every bit as good as the starters for most of the year, just wasn't there. So this team has shown that when it puts everything together, they can compete with anyone, they can beat anyone. It's just a matter of uh, connecting in all facets of the game, hitting, pitching, throwing, catching. All right, well, let's show a little bit of love to the other Diamond Eagles. That's the softball team. But right now, third place in the Sun Belt. And you might think, well, yeah, how good is that? That's really good. The Sun Belt, one of the top teams in RPI in all of the nation. And right now, they're coming off a three-game sweep with App State. So they're playing really well. Yeah, you won't hear this for many other uh, sports in the Sun Belt. But third place, probably enough to, if not get into the regionals, at least warrant a lot of consideration right down to the end especially if they can make some noise in the conference tournament now. Nine and three in conference play, and the uh, the Eagles really gonna get a test this weekend is South Alabama, a team who's been way, uh, deep into the postseason, even going to the College World Series in previous years. They come to Statesboro, so it's time to really see what the Eagles are all about. All right, well, let's get out and see some quick highlights from Georgia Southern and App State. The Georgia Southern softball team hosting Appalachian State in the first two on and Morgan Robinson with the bomb to center field. Three to nothing Georgia Southern on top in the third with one on Jenny Dodd will yank this one into left for a two run shot. Meanwhile on the mound Dixie Raley with the strikeout to end the inning. Georgia Southern wins six to two and will go on to sweep the series taking three games from Appalachian State. Well, Mike, shifting gears now, we move outdoors, or stay outdoors rather, and we get to the Georgia Southern football practice on the banks of beautiful Eagle Creek where, again, the musics are cranking up, they're running around, flying around, trying to earn positions and, and impress the coaches. This weekend, we did get the news they will be playing at Paulson Stadium instead of Statesboro. I know some people might have been a little nostalgic about playing back at Statesboro High again, but they're going to be playing on the brand new turf at Paulson Stadium, so a good thing they've got the blue-white game. Your thoughts on how spring has gone for Georgia South? Well, I think spring's gone exactly how they plan to. No serious injuries to report. That, I think, personally is the most important thing. You can't win any games in the spring, you might be able to improve a little bit, but you can lose some games in the future if you mess around, get some people hurt. But I think this has just been more of an adjustment period, everybody getting familiar with one another. Uh, I think the fans and coaches alike know that the athletes, the horses that uh, the Eagles need are on this team. They know who the playmakers are gonna be. And now it's time to sit back, have a little fun, watch the spring game. I know that people have been eager to see what the field's gonna look like ever since last year when the news came down that the grass was going to be gone at Paulson. Now new artificial turf. The pictures have looked good. I've seen it in person. It looks good. It's going to look even better with a bunch of Eagles running around on it. All right, again, the spring game gets underway 12 noon at Paulson Stadium. For Mike Anthony, I'm Josh Aubrey. We thank you for joining us. Hope to see you again next week.